In an earlier video, we saw that blood levels of lead are associated with an older biological age and an increased risk of death for all causes. Now, a major focus of the channel is to optimize biomarkers of organ and systemic function with the goal of staying as youthful as possible for as long as possible. So with that in mind, what's my data for lead? And additionally, what may help keep plasma lead levels relatively low? So first, what's my data? To start on that journey, I went to ultalabtest.com where I ordered the plasma lead test and a bunch of other tests on that day too. And if you want to do that yourself and help support the channel, there's an affiliate link in the video's description. So I then brought the form to Quest Diagnostics and for a September 6 test, we can see that my plasma levels of lead were less than one microgram per deciliter, which is their lowest limit of detection, which then raises the question, what's optimal? So for that, we'll take a look at a plot for all cause mortality risk, which is shown here on the Y axis, plotted against the concentration of lead in blood on the X. Lowest risk of death for all causes was associated with plasma lead levels that were less than 0.8 micrograms per deciliter. So I seem to be in good shape for plasma levels of lead at less than one microgram per deciliter. Now note that the reference range, the upper limit of the reference range is less than 3.5 micrograms per deciliter. And just to highlight that the reference range is generally not what's optimal, at least in terms of all cause mortality risk in this study, we can see that people who would have 3.5 micrograms per deciliter would be associated with a 30% uh, increased risk of death for all causes relative to people who had plasma lead levels that were 0.8 micrograms per deciliter. All right, so next up is what might contribute to relatively low levels of lead in, in blood or lead in plasma. Now, one factor might be home water filter usage or home water treatment, which is associated with reduced levels of lead in blood. And that's what we'll see here on the y-axis. And on the x, we've got no UHWTD and UHWTD, which stands for Utilization of Household Water Treatment Devices. So then the obvious question is, what are these household water treatment devices? So they included Brita or, Brita or other water pitcher filters, uh, ceramic or charcoal filters, water treatment, including water softeners or aerators, and also reverse osmosis. So people who reported using these water treatment or water filters, what, was, what were their plasma lead levels? So then we've got five groups. Data for all people in black, men in pink or red, women in green, and then two age groups, so older than 60 and younger than 60 in purple. And for each of these groups, including the whole cohort, we can see that people who reported using home water filter treatment or home water filters had significantly lower levels of lead in blood. Now, this is just an association. It's not causation, but it suggests that using water filters may be one way we can help keep plasma le lead levels relatively low. So with that in mind, what water filter do I use? So I've been using Clearly Filtered's water pitcher, which is shown here which on their website, they claim to remove up to 99.3% of lead. And I can't say if this is what is causing my relatively low levels of lead or not. This is just one factor in the approach. If you want to use this picture yourself, there's a discount link in the video's description. Now, the story for plasma lead levels are not yet complete. I, it, it could be, right? I'm using the water, pil uh, water, fit, uh, water filter and my lead levels are relatively low, but... I recently added cocoa beans, whole cocoa beans, back into the approach to test correlations with MCV and lipoprotein A. And I added a relatively high amount, or at least close to the high, uh, high end of my range since 2015 when I started tracking diet, so about around 20 grams per day. Now, cocoa beans have lead. They're a notorious source of relatively high lead levels. And in one study that I found, they contain about 2 micrograms of lead per gram of cocoa bean which based on my 20 gram intake per day now, which I'm gonna continue at least through November and December too until the next test, that should increase my, my dietary intake of lead by about 40 micrograms per day. Will that have an impact on plasma levels of lead? I don't, ne don't yet know, but that blood test is scheduled for the December test. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount and affiliate links that you can use to test yourself while helping to support the channel, including ultalabtest.com, where you can order almost any blood test, clearly filters water pitcher, epigenetic testing, or a microbiome composition, NAD testing with Ginfinity, at-home metabolomics, including more than 600 different metabolites, 
at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, which includes ApoB, but also the epigenetic test GrimAge, green tea, diet tracking with Chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.